Hi, welcome back. This is Frank Tamora with the third video for March 15th of 2011. We're just talking about what had happened with Japan. Japan on March 8th of 2011 uh, had a 7.2 earthquake on the same day that they made a uh, commitment to give 3.1 million dollars to the Palestinians to help the Palestinians to feed the Palestinians and also Japan uh, not just on this day but on many days uh, previous to this have stated that they uh, were backing the Palestinians and to uh, give the Palestinians their own state uh, they were going along with many of the other nations who were trying to give East Jerusalem away again back to the Palestinians. So now we saw what happened on, on that day, on March 8th, on that very day when there was a 7.2 earthquake. And then there were many aftershocks. Now I posted this all on my March 8th uh, post. So if you want to go read that, uh, what I said, everything is still there and the dates are all there. Now on that post, the Lord had really put it on my heart about this curse on, on Japan. And so n knowing what I was feeling in my heart or what I was getting from the Lord, uh, all I know is the Lord said to keep the red flag up and warn about more of these huge quakes coming, more of the disasters because of the curse. And so I left the red flag up and I warned, watch for more of these uh, events to take place because Japan has has fallen underneath the curse. So on March 11th, uh, uh, just a few days later, on March 11th, there was a statement. I'm going to put this up here so you can all see this. There was a statement by the uh, Japan's uh, uh, press secretary. On, and it had to do about Israel. Now listen to this, and I'm going to read this. It says, The government of Japan deplores the decisions of the government of Israel to give permission for the construction of 1,600 housing units in East Jerusalem. Remember Zechariah 12.3? Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone for all people, and all people who come against it will be cut into pieces. This is what Japan has done. It says 1,600 uh, housing units in East Jerusalem in addition to 112 units in the West Bank just after the Israeli and the Palestinian leadership acceptance of the start of indirect talks. goes on to say the government of Japan does not recognize any act that, prejudge, that prejudges the final status of Jerusalem and the territories of the pre-1967 borders. Japan demands that the plan should not be implemented. So they, they were saying, first of all, they deplored it. Then they, they talk about East Jerusalem. And East Jerusalem is the holiest site, as I mentioned already. Then they talk about these 1967 borders. In other words, the 1960 border, 67 borders, which Japan is talking about, Japan wants those borders to go back uh, for this, uh, to so that they can sign this peace agreement, this new peace agreement. The 1967 borders that Japan is referring to and is pushing uh, would give the Palestinians back East Jerusalem. They deplored this. They deplored the fact that Israel is building in East Jerusalem. They deplored the fact that th they're doing this. And because of they did this on March 11th, as they're deploring and going against God's will for the nation Israel and trying to separate Israel and to give back East Jerusalem, a 9.0 earthquake struck Japan. And since then, f since the last five or six days now that that had hit on March, or it's been, uh, let's see, today is the, uh, the fifth, so four days later, Japan has been inundated with earthquakes left, I mean, all, every single day, hundreds of earthquakes, some of which are at a magnitude of 7.2, which if they hit anywhere else would destroy uh, the area. So 
on the very same day you have something massively happening not only did the earthquake take place but it moved the whole Japan eight feet the whole coast eight feet it moved Japan and the tsunami wiped out most of uh, or large part of, of Japan's territory and so you see the curse without a doubt on the very same day and how you cannot see this taking place I, I you know it's just blindness blindness to it now I'm going to give you some other information that I pulled up from the web to show you another instance of the curse and the day that the curse takes place here we go the nation of Israel declared its independence on May 14 1948 in the 62 years since then, the nation of Israel has celebrated its independence and returned to the land, a direct fulfillment of an over 2,000-year-old biblical prophecy. What many do not know is that Israel celebrates its independence according to the Jewish calendar, which is based upon the lunar cycles. So, each year, the day of Israel's independence is celebrated nationally on a different day than the previous year. This is much the same as the Jewish calendar celebration of Passover. This year, 2010, Israel celebrated its independence on April the 19th, according to the Jewish calendar. On the evening of April the 19th, Fox News reported that President Obama of the United States of America and his administration were announcing an unprecedented policy toward Israel. It announced it would no longer automatically stand with Israel in the UN Security Council decisions. Never before in US history has a presidential administration made such a declaration. So on the same day Israel was celebrating its independence and its prophetic return to the land, the US was declaring its official position from the White House that it would no longer automatically support Israel in the United Nations Security Council. The next day, April the 20th, the deep water horizon exploded, killing 11 people and creating the worst environmental disaster in United States history. This disaster story is not yet finished. The United States is literally hemorrhaging its lifeblood, oil. So you have, again, the day after these events that are taking place, and it is just, just astonishing that people uh, don't understand what is actually taking place. Now here is another one. On March 6th, we're going to back up a little bit, of 2011, uh, there's an article that came out by the J Post, Jerusalem Post, with the headlines, Chilean president makes first to, first to visit Israel. Perez ludes... Uh, let me cut to the chase here. I'm going to quote. It says, uh, President Shamir Perez and Chilean President uh, Sabatin Pinero are on the same page with regard to the peace of the Middle East impacting the world at large. A two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the potential of science and technology-based economics for both Israel and the future Palestinian state. So when you have the Chilean president going in and making an arrangement, uh, saying that we're going to, we we believe that we should be separating your land. What happened? Is there anything that took place on March sixth of two thousand eleven on that very day? Well, first of all, let me tell you something else, and you can Google this and drive this point home. You could read the headline: Chile president. A Palestinian state good for Israel, March 6, 2011. Chile's president on Sunday sought uh, to mollify Israel over his country's recognition of the Palestinian statehood, saying that the move was ultimately uh, for the good for the Jewish state. Chile has recognized the Palestinian state because we have always thought that Israel has the right to live within security borders, international uh, recognized borders in peace, he said in English. So what he is saying there is they recognize the Palestinian state because it's going to bring on peace for the Israeli people. Well, 
God doesn't believe me. God, if he says that you're going to separate my land, that there's a curse that's coming. So on May 6th of 2011, there was an earthquake on May 6th, 2011, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake that shook northern Chile. Let me read it. And I quote, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake has stricken northern region of Chile, but no injuries or major damages have been reported. The U.S. Geological Survey in Colorado says the quake was centered in uh, Putri, about 40 miles or 60 kilometers from the, from the port of uh, Acre near the border of Peru. So on that very day, you have the earthquake that struck. Now, when you take a look at what's happening in the United States, uh, for example, uh, just uh, this past week, you saw uh, push for the peace process. You have Hillary Clinton, you have George Mitchell. They're all in the Middle East. They're working, talking on the phones about dividing Israel. They want to rush the peace plan uh, to, so that they can have a peace plan in, in, a, in effect very very soon and they've been pushing this so why Mitchell is over there and discussing breaking up uh, uh, excuse me breaking up Israel you find out the United States has some of the some of the worst storms that have dumping rain and if you go to ABC News you'll see just put in uh, 26 states flooding in the in the East Coast and the, the week that they're, they're talking about this, you have 26 United States, the, the, the states that have been massive floodings, this are forcing uh, people to evacuate. And after the flooding, where the, you can see it on the news, there's another storm right behind it, and they're still underwater. So all of this is happening at the same time that Israel is being influenced by Barack Obama saying we're going to separate it's a good thing to, to give East Jerusalem back and as you can see by all of the evidence and this is only part of it John McTernan has a book out that talks about all of the uh, the, the, the events that the curse the results of the curse and I recommend that you look up John uh, McTernan uh, Israel uh, the curse so just Google that and you'll, I'm sure that you'll be able to find that all over the place. But here's the bottom line to it. God said there was going to be a curse. God showed us that he was going to be dealing with the nation of Israel. He chose those people. Anybody that comes against Israel, we're seeing that there is something that happens, disasters that happen. A lot of those disasters just don't have to be natural, it also economic disasters. We're seeing the nations who are coming against Israel under this curse, their nations are falling apart economically. The European Union has been working with the United States. Their economy is in shambles. The United States economy is in shambles. Japan, who is the third largest, is now almost completely wiped out and it's going to continue for those nations who come against Israel. Today I was looking at the uh, today's results and the European shares tumbled under the weight of Japan's nuclear problem because the nuclear reactors may even melt, a, a meltdown which would be disastrous but again the Lord said I will cut you into pieces so we saw the uh, the stock exchange in Europe today dropped down to its lowest level in 14 weeks and this is not only this problem in Japan is going to ripple economic problems throughout the world and those most of the nations around the world now are saying and aligning themselves against Israel so you have to you really need whether you like it or not these things are happening so you need to pay attention and to understand that God is real and when he says something he means it and if you come against them you'll have to pay for the consequences and God help those who don't believe in the Lord and don't believe his words.